Welcome to Hormel Foods, world's largest Friendsgiving. Now this time, it's not sanctioned by the Guinness Book of World Records. We just know that it's the world's largest Friendsgiving. And you know, Hormel Foods has been a holiday staple in so many homes for almost 130 years. Think about that. 130 years of family, friends, and community. Now I know this year will look a little different for probably all of us, but that doesn't mean that tonight we can't virtually share food and entertainment. But before we get to that entertainment, I want to thank all of our 20,000 team members around the globe. The work that all of you have done this year to continue to provide safe, wholesome product for our customers and consumers. It's been heroic work 
that has kept our product moving into families' households, and I just am so appreciative of the great work all of you have done. I'm also grateful for the legacy of our company and the way that we care about our communities. Throughout this pandemic, we've donated millions of dollars and millions of meals to those in need. And that work, that philanthropy, that generosity will continue as long as we need to do it. And so tonight, we've got a great cast of entertainment. Entertainers like Taylor Dane, Joey Fatone, Boys to Men, and as we always do, there will be a few special guests. So now I'm going to turn it over to the biggest turkey that I know, and that's a compliment because he's the president of Jenny O Turkey Store. But before I do that, from my family to yours, please have a happy and safe Thanksgiving. Take it away, Steve. Thanks, Jim. There really is no greater truth. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us as we gear up for Thanksgiving. Now, we know this year has been difficult for everyone. And so our hope is to, to find a way to bring people together, to celebrate friendship, and all that we're doing to stay safe this holiday season. I'll be back at the end of the evening with a special reminder for everyone. First, let's get to tonight's show. Our host for this evening is Paul Zahn. Paul's an entertaining expert, TV host, and writer. He's created events for everyone from Fergie and Pitbull to several cast members of the Real Housewives franchise, which Glenn Leach and I try to watch together as often as possible. Paul has appeared on E! News, Celebrity Page TV, and is a regular on KTLA, NBC's California Live, ABC7 Los Angeles, and several other television shows. He's also written for BravoTV.com, Gotham Magazine, and Ocean Drive Magazine, among other outlets. Please join me in welcoming Paul. Paul, you are live. Thanks, Jim and Steve. And my name is Paul Zahn. I want to welcome to everybody to the largest Friendsgiving ever, brought to you by Hormel Foods. Now, 2020 has been a little bit tricky, but we still have so much to be grateful for, like the great lineup of talent we have tonight that Hormel got for us. So we'll get to those names in a bit. We have reality stars, we have pop stars, and we have the who's who of the culinary world to show us how to really win for Friendsgiving, Thanksgiving, and actually all year round. My Friendsgiving this year is gonna be different, much like everyone's. Last year I was traveling with some friends, the year before I was volunteering, but um, I'm so excited to be with everyone tonight. And uh, the first tip that I have is to create a signature cocktail because you have to have some cocktails if you're having a holiday party, right? So we're gonna do something a little different this year. We're gonna do a mezcal margarita. It's a riff on a regular margarita, but we're using mezcal, which is basically tequila's cousin. Let's switch it up for 2020, right? So we're gonna take an ice mixing tin and we are gonna do two ounces of mezcal, delicious smokiness, like so. Then we are going to do a half ounce of some orange, liqueur, then we're gonna add some fresh lime, about a half ounce of fresh lime. And what we're gonna do is we've rimmed the glasses with some tahini and the salt to give it that extra kick because everyone needs a kick around the holiday times, right? Now we are gonna just shake this up like so. And we're gonna strain it over some fresh ice. And boom, we have a easy breezy mezcal margarita like so, delicious. Now, I'm excited to welcome our first guest. He's an Emmy winner, a New York Times bestselling author, a style guru. He's really like a Renaissance man that can do anything. He was on Dancing with the Stars, and we all first met him during Queer Eye for the Straight Guy in 2003. Carson Kressley is the type of guy that everybody wants at their dinner party. And Oprah called him, and he had a show on our own network called Carson Nation. So everybody, please join me in welcoming my friend, Carson Kressley. Oh, Paul, Carson? Paul, you said so many nice things. I've got, to, I've got to remember to send you a check. 
That was wonderful. You're so nice. And um, oh. happy Hormel Friendsgiving. Carson, I'm so excited that you're here with us. Two things I learned about you during this um, 2020 year that we had. You're the king of caftans and you're sort of a cowboy, right? I am, yeah. We are uh, we're streaming live from my farm in Pennsylvania. It's about 100 miles west of New York City and it's been a great refuge um, during the pandemic, but it's also been a great place to um, learn how to cook and make food and um, be with my family. So uh, it's wound up to be a little bit of a silver lining to have a great place to escape to. So, and I wanted now, to say Carson, thanks to Hormel. Carson, I know cooking, you said cooking. We have people that are gonna be cooking. So maybe we'll, we'll learn something from them, but I wanna hear a little bit about creating the perfect tablescape. Can you share some yeah, tips on that? Yeah, exactly. I sure can, Paul. So really, you've heard that phrase, you know, you eat with your eyes first. And I really like to create a beautiful kind of setting to set the mood for the holiday, whether um, it's Thanksgiving or Friendsgiving. Um, I think it's really nice to take some time. It doesn't have to be expensive. It doesn't have to be elaborate, but take some time to really um, put some thought into making a beautiful presentation so that your guests feel kind of wowed. You want to create that moment and that excitement. So I'm going to walk you through my table here um, at the farm and it's pretty easy. I literally just whipped this up in like 20 minutes. I know I'm good, but still. I love and, it. You're um, so good. You're so good. It Carson. was easy. So the first thing I like to have, I did whip up um, these little, um, this is Hormel pepperoni with some peanut butter, some Skippy, my fave and some crushed um, cashews. I think the first thing, you always want to have some snacks uh, ready for when your guests arrive. So I have these in a container and you also want to also have a beverage ready. So that's, those are like the go-tos. You got to have those ready to go. Now right, tablescape. Right. We're gonna talk. I we're love, gonna talk I love about a good entry entry cocktail when people arrive and a little snack. I like what you did over there. I'm 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 pretty jealous. Yeah, come you know, visit and, you eat and wet, drink there. You gotta wet the appetite, Paul. So um, I'm gonna walk you through this table from the foundation all the way to the tippy top. So I started just with this table runner, and I made out of burlap, and I literally found this in my garage. Um, you can get it at any hardware store. It's very cheap. You don't have to buy expensive linens. So I just did the burlap table runner, probably about five bucks. Then I added um, more of a raffia round um, placemat. And then I used this, um, this china that I already had, and it does not match. It's all from thrift stores and vintage. And uh, it looks like it matches because it's all brown but they're not a matching set. You don't have to have matching sets. And then have a beautiful napkin. I chose these cloth ones. They're literally from discount stores, places like Home Goods, TJ Maxx, wherever, totally inexpensive. But that whole, the mat, the mixed match china and the textile in the napkin really creates that, that table setting. Then- I really love the burlap, the burlap. It's really Thank chic you. looking. You, yeah, can make, it's, you can make a burlap bag look chic. You're just I try, good. I try. And then um, let's talk about your centerpiece also. I like to have greenery and I have a floral centerpiece, but you don't have to absolutely have that. Um, you could very easily do what I did. I had all these pumpkins around my house um, for Halloween and for fall decorating. And they were all different colors. So I just, you know, they haven't gone bad. So I used them as part of my Thanksgiving tablescape. I added some greenery literally from my backyard. Oops. Um, these are magnolia leaves. I found some hydrangea leaves and they're just beautiful colors. And I just zhuzhed them on my table with my pumpkins. And what's great about using natural things is that, um, you're not wasting them. You can actually use these pumpkins to make pumpkin pies. You can harvest the, the seeds and make toasted pumpkin seeds. Um, and I think natural always looks, looks great. I love, unlike my face, I like a natural table. Okay. So I, Carson, that's great. I like both not, of them. You know what I did one you. year at Thanksgiving with a pumpkin from Halloween? I took a Sharpie 
And I had mm -hmm. everybody go around the table with the pumpkin and a Sharpie and write down something that they were grateful for that year. And people really oh, loved amazing. that. And then at Christmas, we turned it into a pumpkin pie, like you said. Oh my God, amazing, amazing. Um, I always like to have some candlelight. I think it really adds ambiance. Inexpensive tapers from you know any convenience store. Um, just make sure that they're not scented because you want people to really focus on the aromas of your gorgeous food um, and not a scented candle. So just make sure that they're unscented tapers. Very, very easy. Um, and then that really kind of creates the mood. And then one thing I love to have um, for any holiday dinner, and when we start to gather again, this is a fun idea. Um, I like to everybody to have kind of a takeaway, um, a gift that you can go home with. And this is just a beautiful candle. I did festive orange ribbon. Um, it's just nice to have kind of a um, something to remember um, the evening by. And that's a great little takeaway. Um, I love and that's a takeaway, really it. Carson. You know, another takeaway I love? that you can do with stuff laying around your own home. You could do a hot cocoa mm -hmm. to go kit. You take a mason jar, put some hot cocoa, put some Hershey Kisses in there, put some marshmallows, right. put a little ribbon on it, send people home with that, and they can have hot cocoa the next day. Exactly, they love it. And it's a little treat that they wouldn't necessarily do for themselves. So anything you can do like that, that makes it um, memorable and fun um, is really, really great. And then one thing I didn't mention, but one thing that's really easy, when you do this mix and match china, this is great for every course and you can have your table set and ready. So soup happens, you clear that away. Then you have a salad, you clear that away. And then you have your entree when you have your, um, when you have your turkey dinner. So it also makes the table look really interesting and layered. So. I like, I'm a more is more and less is a bore kind of guy. So I like to have it lush and layered. Um, and then I the last that. touches. I, I really love that. And Carson, one thing I want to tell everybody in our friends giving that's watching at home, this is an interactive experience. So comment in the comments. I have the feed yes. going right here. If you have qu questions for Carson, questions for me, we're here to answer them, right? Carson, you'll answer some questions. For sure. And if you have questions, I'm gonna post all of this on my Instagram stories. I'll do close-ups of all the table settings um, and I'll explain where I got stuff, how I laid it out. But honestly, like the China is from flea markets, the um, charging placemats were from home goods. Um, the burlap was from my garage. These greenery and the pumpkins I literally had in my yard from, th from Halloween. And then the only thing I bought were the flowers and you can do that or you don't even have to have them. This would be totally fine if it was just um, maybe some pomegranates and some pears. And then you can actually eat it or put it in somebody's lunchbox or um, make a salad the next day. So you don't have to do the flowers. I think that's a great tip um, to just use natural things that you find in your own backyard. You know, another idea, Carson, that you could do with the pumpkin, you could carve out the middle put a mason mm -hmm. jar in there, and then it's an instant vase or vase, whatever you want to say, you know? Yeah, I, I had a larger one like this, Paul, that I was going to actually hollow out and put the centerpiece in. Um, so you can totally do that. It looks really, really great as kind of a natural container. I love that. I love that. I love the high, the low. You really got it going on over there. Thank um, what you. is your favorite dish for Friendsgiving or Thanksgiving? Oh, so I make, um, we are in um, Eastern Pennsylvania and my family is uh, Pennsylvania German and they have this thing that they make and it's very traditional. Uh, we don't do stuffing. We do Pennsylvania Dutch potato filling and people are always like, Ooh, what's that? It's basically like really jacked up mashed potatoes that you saute celery and onion and parsley, and then you fold them into mashed potatoes with lots of butter and some bread that's soaked in milk. And then that kind of becomes a stuffing. And then you put that in the oven with some more butter on top and you get this great, delicious, um, rich potato casserole. It is so good. I'm gonna start making mine um, tomorrow. Um, start cooking the potatoes and everything. And then um, I will whip it up on uh, Thanksgiving morning and then I'll serve two big batches um, 
when I have our very small intimate family gathering here at the farm. I love that. Now, what's something everybody should know, Carson? Tell me. You know, I think the most important thing with a tablescape is uh, just have fun with it. Have, uh, have it be kind of creative fun. It does not have to be perfect. And um, if your table doesn't look perfect, you can just serve extra wine and no one's going to know. That's my uh, tip Carson, to you. From your lips to God's ears. I love that. Extra wine, tablescape. Carson, thank you so much for joining us today. Your tips You're were so amazing, easy, chic, everything people knew to win for Friendsgiving, Thanksgiving, and everything. That's me, easy and chic. So um, yeah, everybody just go to at Carson Cressley on Instagram and I'll show you how to do it step by step. And thanks thank for having so me, much. Paul, and thanks for Mel. Well, thank you. Now that we have an entry cocktail, we have the tablescape, I think it's time to start with some nibbles. And what better way than with a charcuterie board? So Hormel is bringing out the big guns. They have a charcuterie director from Columbus Craft Meats, who's also the salami guy. Evan Anata is joining us to chat about how to really win with your charcuterie board during Friendsgiving, Thanksgiving. And again, I think this, these are tips you can use all year round. So welcome, Evan. Let's see what you got. How's it going? I'm Evan Inada, Charcuterie Director at Columbus Craft Meats. Hopefully all my Hormel friends and family are all happy, healthy, and ready to celebrate the Thanksgiving safely this year. Me personally, I'm gonna be celebrating at a little social distance from my friends and family, but doesn't mean we can't enjoy charcuterie together still. So really what I did was I built little charcuterie boxes that are personal size boxes. This could be for one person or this could be for just a small family. And I'm gonna stack about four or five out on the table and each one of our groups are gonna grab it, stay our six feet apart and just enjoy charcuterie together. Now, when building a charcuterie board, especially during Thanksgiving, it's always important to remember your hierarchy on the food chain this year. Turkey's gonna be number one. So you're not going to try to take the attention away from the turkey. Really, the charcuterie's job here is to be that hype man, to excite those taste buds, wake up those taste buds, keep those uh, guests from being hangry, and waiting for that charcuterie board is that perfect way to just bring all those fun flavors together for everybody to enjoy. Now, you could do an easy way, just bring a charcuterie tasting board, a Mediterranean tasting board to any occasion, tear off the label and you're good to go like that. Or the one secret about this kit is it's a starter kit for a beautiful charcuterie showcase. So what I'm doing is I'm taking everything out of this uh, charcuterie platter and I'm gonna be putting it onto the charcuterie board right here. Now, just to tell you the basics on building the board and building those perfect bites of flavor onto your charcuterie board, remember these four things that are really important. So you're gonna start with the cheese. now. Salami is always gonna be the most important part of the charcuterie board, but the cheese is gonna be the spacing on the board that just gives it that beauty and look. So we're gonna be based around two main flavors here, sweet and creamy and spicy and bold. So for the sweet and creamy side, we're gonna go with a nice little brie as well as a gouda. So the gouda, just cut down straight down into nice triangle pieces, and you're actually gonna just connect the little edges together so that each edge has a nice little rotation so it just looks beautiful when people look at it. Now, two sweet flavors on the board. Now you go with your savory and spicy. So pimento cheese, can't go wrong for a Thanksgiving feast, having a little bit of pimento cheese on the board. And then the aged cheddar is one of those bold flavors that's really friendly for everybody to enjoy. Everybody loves a good aged cheddar. So just breaking it down in little pieces, little bite-sized pieces, so it just goes perfectly with any salami pairing. Now, when it comes to the salami, salami is always gonna be the star of the show. And really when it comes to a charcuterie board, salumi is what brings everything together. So because it's dry cured, you have that bite of salami and you have the chance to grab a piece of cheese or an olive or a cracker to really build these beautiful layers of flavor on each bite. So for the salami, we're gonna start off with the sopressata as the perfect salami to put on the charcuterie board. Nice bold flavor with a little bit of red pepper and sweet fennel seeds. So just folding quarters like this and cascade down the board. Now you're gonna to wanna to put this in between your two bolder flavors. So that nice 
cheddar and gouda right here on the border is going to be right where you're going to put it in between because it goes great with those two flavors perfectly. Now, we got the chorizo casero. Now, the chorizo is in part of the Mediterranean tasting board. This is a Spanish style chorizo, so it has a beautiful smoked paprika flavor to it. So it goes great with the pimento cheese, uh, Spanish style manchego cheese, or anything with a little bit of kick. So adding that chorizo right there is the perfect little combination. Now, comes to the charcuterie bacon. A little bit of wow factor. We got our maple candied bacon here. It's just like dropping a mic on any charcuterie board. So we're gonna put this right near the sweet, creamy uh, brie right here to break up that creaminess of the brie when you pair it with that uh, charcuterie bacon right there. Now, another element that's extremely important in charcuterie is the color, the crunch, and the acid. Now you get that in crackers, fruits, and also nice little fun wow factor items. But let's start off with the fruits. So fruits, you're going a bit with a little bit of crunch, a little bit of sweetness, but you also want to have a little bit of acidity in your fruits that you're choosing. So choosing some nice green grapes goes great with the crunch and acidity. Also having your blackberries near the um, Gouda is a great way to just bring out some crisp, fun color and flavor to the board. So having your berries pair right there with the sopressata and the Gouda is just that perfect combination right there. Having like a pomegranate, it has that nice, beautiful red color that looks good, great on a charcuterie board. So we're gonna just put that next to the orange part of the pimento cheese. Adding nice strawberries to the board, just again adds that nice sweet acid to the board, as well as that beautiful flavor and color that just makes everything come together. We got our kiwis here, which has some green color, and again, that acidity, as well as you could go for wow factor fruits like a nice little uh, dragon fruit to add a nice color and fun in flavor that some people have never seen. It's nice to add some fun, exciting flavors because people want to get wowed when they're celebrating together, and these are the perfect things on the board to really engage with the eater and really get them to want to try everything. Turkish apricots, great dried fruit that just goes good in the Mediterranean tasting board, putting everything together. And then we're gonna focus on the peppers. These little sweet little cherry peppers are great to bring out that nice crunch and pairing with the pimento cheese. Now again, I said crunch, you wanna finish with the crackers. So having these nice little fruit grain crackers are great to go with the creamier cheeses and salami. And then having these candy nuts goes great with both cheddar and a little bit of gouda because the gouda is already kind of has that nuttiness to it. Now, these crisp crackers are great with pimento cheese as well as torali crackers. Now, torali crackers are gonna be this X factor cracker that we put in our Mediterranean tasting board. This is one of my favorite things. A little bit of sherry in these crackers gives it that nice bite and that beautiful flavor that just really brings everything together. And then finishing off with a little bit of wow factor. So we got sweetie drop peppers that have a nice little bit of bite to it. We got a little dried mandarin oranges that give a little bit of crunch and color throughout the board. So we're just gonna scatter those in the perfect places needed. And then again with the dragon fruit and finishing up again with just a little bit of maple charcuterie bacon just makes everything come together in perfection. So once you're all done with that, last but not least is the prosciutto. Now slow aged prosciutto, you just want to kind of take in pieces and almost drape down into the spots needed. So you're trying to just fill up these spots on the board that don't have that perfect color yet to it. So getting these prosciutto slices and really kind of draping it where it's needed is just the perfect way to finish off a charcuterie board as seen. So once all of that's done, you got your charcuterie board right here. Fun, exciting, wakes up those taste buds, gets you ready for your turkey feast. And if you want to have a little bit of fun, get something to make the kids all excited and happy during the holidays. You could also use all those same ingredients and make a little charcuterie turkey right here. So if you look at this right here, this is a little charcuterie turkey, has that beautiful feathers with the sopressata, use the peppers to make a little turkey face on there, and you're good to go with some fun, friendly things that the kids like to see as well. And with all these tips, hopefully you're ready to celebrate with your friends and family with Columbus and Charcuterie. Evan, we, we know everything about Charcuterie now.
thank you so much for for sharing your tips with us. Um, I love the different textures. I love the different tastes. And what that charcuterie turkey, that's going to win over the kids, don't you think? You know, having fun with kids and trying to involve them in charcuterie is always a great time. So yeah, it's 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 really fun when you're pairing and doing these little tricks to just kind of entertain while everybody's waiting for the turkey to come. So really doing fun charcuterie turkeys or just that building a little perfect bite of charcuterie just to keep people going is always a good time. I love it. I love it. So with 2020 being 2020 and some people just having, say, two people at home, your boards are gorgeous and large and everything like that. What are like the top three elements that people could do to do like a mini charcuterie board? So I think you, charcuterie is perfect for all occasions and all sizes, really. Me, myself, it's that quality of life I am that gets me through all these Zoom meetings back to back. It's just that perfect little bite of charcuterie. So really focusing again on the meat and cheese. Those are always going to be the two stars of the show. So all the flavors kind of are based off of those two elements. And then having a little bit of acid and crunch. So I think acid would be the more important of the two, just because it gives it that nice little break in between the good fat combinations of the meat and cheese. So it's always a good time. Well, I know you're the king of charcuterie now. Um, I want to chat a little bit about what to do with the leftover charcuterie items because I'm on a budget, everyone's on a budget. So how can you incorporate those with some leftovers for, you know, the day after Friendsgiving or Thanksgiving to whip up some tasty breakfast? Any thoughts there? You know what, uh, personally for me, this is a little, uh, maybe out of the ordinary, but we do a lot of shashuka at my house. So having a nice shashuka, a little uh, tomato stew, when you have a bread, nice sourdough bread toasted with a little bit of the leftover cheeses and salami, you could really build a board of flavor just off of a perfect breakfast charcuterie board. It's, uh, charcuterie, again, it's great for all occasions. So having those fresh fruit elements along with some nice sweeter breads and dried fruits and salami, it's, it's great as a leftover, just almost as good as leftover turkey. Almost as good, almost as good. I love that. I gotta love remember that. to start So what is show. one big charcuterie don't? I have, a, I have one. It's when people try to act like a cheese board is a charcuterie board. I'm there with you on that. And I think one thing that I see that is a little out there to me is when you're putting flowers on the board and it's not an edible flower, always do your research on what you're putting onto a charcuterie board because a lot of people, they want to have that wow factor on the look for the Instagram or social media, but certain flowers like, for instance, like a daisy, if you were to put that on there, something you don't want to have a allergic reaction where it could cause just a disaster for the holidays, so. Absolutely, absolutely. And that also translates to, to, to cocktails. If you use flowers that aren't edible or if you use things like activated charcoal, allergies, stuff like that. So I guess that's a tip for entertaining in general. Just know people's allergies, know people's, you know, what they like, what they don't like, and things that will poison them because we do not want to yeah, be poisoned. Yeah, you got to know how to play the things. crowd. You got to know how to play the crowd for sure. And then for you on cocktails, what's your favorite type of cocktail to kind of support the charcuterie board? Out of curiosity. Um, one... I've been playing with some Marsala wines and some port wines, which skew a little bit sweeter. So those go really well with the charcuterie board because it tends to skew a lot more salty. So you can offset the salt with the sweet or a nice little spritz cocktail, just some like Amaro and some bubbly and a little lemon juice, lower ABV. So that way you can, you know, not the room won't spin after you have one of them and you can enjoy your charcuterie board that you've put together so wonderfully. What about you? I know you're a beer aficionado. What would you, what would you drink with that? What? You know, so I love, I do love pairing uh, charcuterie with craft beer because really, when you're talking about entertaining the crowd, charcuterie and craft beer pairings actually have a new kind of element to it, where it'll transform the normal flavor of a craft beer to something completely new, depending on what salami you're pairing with. So, for the bold, spicy flavors on the board that we just made, like. A porter or a stout is kind of my ideal craft beer pairing for that because you get that nice maltiness, that nice rich flavor to it that just pairs perfectly with the red pepper in all the salami and everything else you see on the board. I think when you're going with the breeze and the sweeter, creamier flavors, a Saison is just a perfect kind of beer for that because it has that nice fruit flavor to it, that nice acidity that just kind of really goes perfect on a charcuterie board when you're looking for easy eating. I love IPAs as well, but 
again, Thanksgiving, you don't want to make grandpa fall asleep before Thanksgiving turkey comes out. So IPA pairings tend to be a little trickier during this holiday. I, I mean, I always wanted grandpa to fall asleep before Thanksgiving, but that's just me. And I also want to let everybody know that's watching. If you have any questions for Evan, just put them in the comments. I'm reading people's comments, asking some questions to Evan. So if he, we don't answer them right now, we'll get to them. So it's an inter, interactive Friendsgiving with Hormel Foods. So any questions you guys have. Evan, we have about 30 seconds left. So any last tips you have before we let you go? The king of char charcuterie. Yeah, you know what, we'd love, we'd love for you guys to check out our website, columbuscraftmeats.com. We have a lot of uh, inspiration boards that we built on the website over there just to show how to use our charcuterie in any occasion. And then also we'll be building the perfect bite on my Instagram uh, in the next few months. So that's going to be uh, at the salami samurai.com or at the salami samurai on IG. So. Well, thank you so much for all your tips and guys, make sure you follow him. Um, I'm gonna follow him and use all of his tips. Music is an important part of any celebration, any party. And guys, we have a musical act that is pretty iconic. Taylor Dane has sold over 75 million records and albums, and she has 17 top 20 hits. She has a career spanning 30 years. She's been on Broadway. She was on Rude Awakenings on Showtime. And there's really nothing Taylor Dane can't do. She was also on Food Network, so she knows her way around a kitchen. And um, I'm really excited to have Taylor Dane joining us today. Tell it to my heart, Taylor Dane. I'm so excited to have you with our Hormel Foods Thank Friendsgiving. You. How are you? Happy holidays. Oh, I'm wonderful. Thank you, honey. Happy holidays. Happy wow. holidays. So let's chat a little bit about you and your holiday traditions. What are some holiday traditions you have? Well, it's definitely, I'm a mom, 18, 19 years now. So it's definitely home or going someplace with my kids or at least la navigating someplace. And we're, this year is definitely a different time, but we're together. So that's definitely what matters. And uh, we're all here now in LA. So um, mm -hmm. <laughs> the tradition. Um, food, clearly, as now Hormel, we understand. So it's all food and uh, side dishes definitely count. That is definitely a food thing. Taylor, let's talk about the fact that you were on the Food Network, much like <laughs> so many of the people we have on our Friendsgiving. And um, it became a big deal. <laughs> yeah, it was a big deal. You are a competitor. So More let's than talk a about competitor. some side dishes. <laughs> Like your I became my, my God, my favorites. Well, we can't not talk about me and matzo ball soup in the same in the same sentence. That's for sure. Um, I am a, a Jewish woman. I am from Long Island. I am from New York. I am was born in New York Hospital and raised in the Bronx, and then ultimately Long Island. So let's talk about my favorite dishes. So, of course, uh, the matzo ball soup saved me on from from Joey Fatone and it saved me from elimination, but it's not, it, it saved Joey from a wipeout. But I would have to say the um, Italian dish, what was the dish that absolutely, that I, I, I really should have won was because of the spaghetti carbonara, don't you think? I Was totally complete? think you should have won. You were robbed. Hmm. I was robbed maybe of you'll that. Win another, you maybe you'll win don't another you think reality this? competition show. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> no, <I'm> <laughs> Reality now let's talk about my, leftovers. Let's talk about leftovers. What are some of your leftovers. favorite leftovers? Oh my goodness. I, I even think pizza can be a leftover. Is that possible? I think cold pizza is I think cold pizza is unbelievable. But I think even I think a pizza, I, I think a bagel with uh, I, I could be wrong about that. But okay. I think stuffing can be a leftover. I, I do believe cold stuffing is incredible. But I, like I do that. believe I'm on board. I'm on board. I do have a question. Are you teen pumpkin pie or teen sweet potato pie? That's a hot button issue. Both. 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 I love sweet potato pie. But I, you have to, I, I love it really, really souffle style. But I also love a beautiful, beautiful, well done um, pumpkin pie. I love that. But I love I'm coming but, over uh, for a slice. Okay, but are, are you into are you into butternut squash? That's the same thing too. Are you acorn squash, butternut squash? I love a butternut squash soup but I like it a little savory. Some people, I do. I like the, your, the you're savory. You're stalling. 
Yeah, yeah. There's, you're, you're, getting, you're, not, you're getting the mind not, going. And I'm also thinking of using a Jenny O turkey the day after to make a matzo ball soup. Hmm. Do you think I'll that could work? Matzo ball soup. Yeah. Right? You don't think? No, I do. But you're the, you're the Food Network competitor. I'm just making drinks over here. But, but now so I'm into this frothy thing. stuff. I'm into, the, I'm into the egg white on top now. Now I'm into froth. And I know you're into bone broth. Turkey, bone broth. And I, I am. I'm into the broth. But I like the froth, too. The broth and the froth. They... Oh, now we're wrapping. Now we're wrapping. I'm, <laughs> now I'm, ra I'm into the froth. So we have to do frothy. So, Taylor, okay. what mm -hmm. is one thing you're grateful for in 2020? It's been a crazy year, but we still have stuff to be grateful for. So what's one thing you No, entirely. Well, I'm super grateful. You know, family, friends, great friendships. Like, Paul, I consider you an enormous, an enormous friend. I'm really grateful. This has been a reset year. Like, every time you think, hey, I got it, I know it. No, zero. You don't think. Don't, don't bother. Right. It's right. Um, been a real reset. I'm grateful for the time. That um, I spent 30, 32 years traveling a lot, spent on the road. Um, but there's been a lot of reset button spent here. And I'm grateful that um, I've had this opportunity to now be home um, with people that I love, that um, care about me. Yet at the same time, um, I have to care and love myself. And it's taught me to find places and ways to keep digging and learn about myself and Absolutely. that reset button. Absolutely. Yeah. You understand what I mean, right? Like it's yes. kind of digging process. I do, and but I see digging. you there with the microphone, Taylor. And I see all yeah. that holiday background and I hear you have a yeah. new holiday song. I so do. I think it's time to hear your new hit single. Mm. Oh. My soul is snowing, the wind is blowing, but I can weather the storm. What do I care how much it may storm? I've got my love to keep me warm. I can't remember the worst December. Just watch the icicles form. What do I care if icicles form? I've got my love to keep me warm. Off with my overcoat, off with my gloves. I need no overcoat, I'm bursting with love. My heart's on fire, the flames in liar. But I will weather the storms. What do I care? How much it may storm. Oh, I got my love to keep me warm. Yeah. I'll dance with my little. Woo! Come on, Paul. Taylor, you definitely have another hit on your hands with that one. That is a. Well, we can have a glass or two of, you know. Some a little warm more we know. cognac. Some warm <laughs> nog, right? <laughs> exactly. I love you, exactly. Paul. Exactly. So, Taylor, we did get a oh, request. Uh, up with my overcoat, off with my glove. I need no overcoat. I'm bursting with love. My heart's on fire. The flame burns higher. Oh, I will weather the storm. What do I care how much it may storm? Oh, I got my love to keep me. I got my love to keep me. I got my love to keep me warm. 
Was that Hail good? It sounded Dane. like okay. You have didn't a it sound like hit that on your hands? Okay, thank you, honey. But we also want to hear "Tell It to My Heart." <laughs> I can't wait. Do you wait. think you could give us a little "Tell It to My Heart"? I think I can, lover. I think you've sang it a, a time or two. <laughs> I think I sang it a time or two. Hit it, baby. When we're together, emotion over love, in the heat of pleasure, take me, I'm yours, into my arms, never let me go, tonight I really need to know. To my heart, tell me I'm the only one. Is this really love or just a game? Tell it to my heart, I can make my body rock every time you call my name. Yeah, yeah, nice and so complete. It's never ending as long as I receive. The message you're sending, body to body, soul to soul, always feel you near here. So say the words I long to hear. Tell it to my heart. Tell me I'm the only one. Is this really love or just a game? Tell it to my heart. Cause I can feel my body rock every time you call my name. Love, love, yeah. Oh, uh. here's my dancing partner, Paul. Woo! <laughs> well, there it is. Taylor, I am Aww. so grateful that you took the time today <laughs> and Friendsgiving did up with us and Hormel Foods. So sure I'm going to send you to have a wonderful holiday time Aww. and big love kisses you. and talk to you soon. <laughs> I love you guys. Thank you so much, Hormel. Thank you guys. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving. We love you over here. The Danes send you, you love. Happy Thanksgiving from us. Thank you for my tech team, Levi. Say thank you. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody over here. Here's my tech team. Tech team. Happy Thanksgiving. The Danes. <laughs> What a voice on her. Another one of her hits is Don't Rush Me, which I think should be the Thanksgiving anthem because you don't want to rush that turkey, people, right? Well, we have a singer, and now we have a hysterical comedian. We have Kev on stage, who is a social media influencer who is absolutely hysterical. If you are not following him on Instagram, you're missing out. So he was raised a military kid, traveled around a lot, where he really honed his skill set for comedy. Um, his videos are hysterical on his IG, and I'm so excited to welcome him today. So Kev on stage, welcome. Let's get into Hello. it. Paul, thank you so much for having me. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving to you. I want to start things off with a very hot button issue that's been discussed today. Okay. Okay. Pumpkin pie or sweet potato pie? Oh, I know you know boy. about this. Listen, Paul. Okay. In the black community, it is frowned upon to even like pumpkin pie, but I stand firm in my choices. I like pumpkin pie. It is fine. I like grocery store pumpkin pie, especially, which makes it even worse to some people. But the thing is, Paul, it's really consistent at grocery stores. They got to give you a, a, a similar pie every time. I'm getting ready after this to go to the grocery store. I'm going to have one by myself. And too bad. If you don't like it, there's nothing you can do. I eat it every year. I start around October 15th and I stop around Martin Luther King Day. And that's it. I'm going to eat it. 
And I'd like sweet potato pie too, but you know, if you give me a choice, I'm taking pumpkin. There's a there's a certain um, uh, nostalgia to it in my in my life. My mom did not bake, so she only had store bought grocery store pumpkin pies, and that reminds me of the holidays. Okay, Paul, sue me. Hey, I'm on board for any pie, but I have one rule when it comes to my desserts. There is no fruit in the dessert. Really? Fruit is a healthy thing. I don't want any apple pie. I don't want a cherry pie. So I'm on board for pumpkin pie and sweet potato pie. Okay, I'll, you think I'll let that? you live there. I'll let you live there. My wife doesn't like warm fruit. I like all fruit. I like hot, cold, apple, apple crisp, key lime, pumpkin. Is pumpkin a fruit or vegetable? I think it's a vegetable, but anyway. I like them all. It is definitely a vegetable because if it was a fruit, I would not like it. See, Kev, come on. Come on. <laughs> That's the qualifying thing. If you like it, it can't be a, <laughs> it can't be a fruit. But on that same note, I want to talk about some Thanksgiving sides that you love and some that you're, no, 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 no. Ixnay. Yeah. I love macaroni and cheese, okay? But on, on Thanksgiving, it should be made traditionally. That's Cheese, butter, noodles, maybe bacon. If you add Hormel bacon to it, fine. However, Paul, and I don't want to get upset because I know we just met, adding vegetables to macaroni and cheese is grounds for violence. I saw a network that shall not be named. They had Brussels sprouts and carrots and celery and macaroni and cheese. Gruyere. You, Gruyere is not a macaroni and cheese cheese. Okay, Gruyere no. has a lot of, you know, I know Evan, he's a charcuterie uh, guy. Gruyere has a place there. It does not have a place in macaroni and cheese. I'm sorry, Paul, I'm getting upset. I don't want to do this. We just met. Don't, this don't, is don't get upset. I do not want to upset you. So okay. I will not ask about raisins in the potato salad. Oh, I'm just going to oh, segue you into your favorite you Thanksgiving drinks. You say, okay. Whew. Okay. Uh, what I like, uh, I've been having a lot more lately is hot chocolate with a little bit of Bailey's or a little bit of Kahlua uh, just to spice it up or eggnog with a little bit of the same. Eggnog's already really creamy, but throwing a little basil, uh, Bailey's in there, it's like adult eggnog. You know, you had a long day, kids are going up to bed. You wanna let your, you know, open up your jeans, let your stomach out and <laughs> have, a, have a little mug of eggnog with a hint of grandpa's old cough medicine. <laughs> See, I'm gonna take it up one level more. I would add bourbon into my hot cocoa. Oh, bourbon! You know, um, that's how I throw down during the, the holiday okay. season. Yes, oh. the family might like mine, forget it. You need to drink bourbon everything. Bourbon and hot cocoa? That'll put some, some uh, hair on your chest. Well, I just had my chest waxed, so we're, we're good. We're good. <laughs> okay, so my next question for you is cranberry sauce. Let's talk about cranberry sauce. See, I am yeah. requiring the cranberry sauce to have the rings, not the mush. Yes. What are your thoughts? I'm with you 100%. I don't, it's another thing that I, you can feel how you feel. To me, I like the ring. First of all, it's much easier, you know, on your next day, you want to make like a turkey sandwich with some dressing, the turkey uh, and, and cranberry sauce. It's a lot easier to cut a sliver of that onto your sandwich if it's, you know, in the jelly version. When it has the like the mush thing, usually that's also a little more sour than I like, you know, the jelly version out of the can. So simple, open the can, drop it out, done. That's how that it should sounds, be done. That sounds perfect, but it's called stuffing and not dressing. So I'm just gonna have to oh. check you there, boo. Oh, come on, man. Do you wanna be friends or enemies? I wanna be friends with you, but you're, you're, you're throwing a lot of jabs here, okay? What is the difference between stuffing? Uh, stuffing and dressing is it a regional thing is it how it's cooked there's no there's no foolproof way i put dressing on a salad which i'm not eating during friendsgiving <laughs> thanksgiving christmas so that's what dressing is and that's an english that. language thing we have a lot of homonyms and synonyms and cinnamon mm, cinnamon cinnamon i love <laughs> a cinnamon that time of year At least we get cinnamon on eggnog that. Some yes. whiskey, yeah. some bourbon. So <laughs> You're on the bourbon. I want to chat a little bit about you becoming the Baron of Bacon. That's the name I'm giving you. Oh, so man. what have you learned and what can you share with us during this Friendsgiving about all the delicious Hormel bacon that you've created Listen. masterpieces with? 
First of all, let me tell you, Black Label Bacon is top shelf, okay? They should lock that up in the freezer. You know, the grocery store, they lock up the top shelf alcohol. They should lock up the top shelf Hormel Black Label Bacon because it's perfect. Right now, ever since I did my last thing with Hormel, I've been doing a lot of candied bacon. You know, you just put it on the sheet, a lot of brown sugar, and then you just bake that, take it out and eat it. It's really good on turkey sandwiches. You put some bacon on there. You could do peanut butter jelly and bacon. You could do uh, grilled cheese with bacon. You can just eat bacon straight up. I don't have to have a reason. I don't have to have a dish. I just want three slices. I'm gonna do that because that's how much bacon is good for me. But I like big fat pieces, chunk them up, you know, cut them into big chunks and put it into a salad. I wanna take all the healthiness out of the salad, all the flavor, a little bit of healthiness and dressing. Hmm? Remember from our earlier conversation? And, <laughs> and Hormel <laughs> bacon is number one topping uh, there. But, okay, okay. We'll, yeah. we'll take out the dressing, but add the bacon. Um, yes. I wanna talk a little bit about social media etiquette during Friendsgiving, Thanksgiving, the holidays. I know that you've spoken a lot about a certain pose over the head and all that, so let's get into it. Okay, you, you did your research here, Paul. <laughs> Here's my thing about social media etiquette. Two things. One, if you're gonna take a picture of your food, make sure it looks good. A lot of times your food doesn't look as good in picture form as it does on your actual plate and you're really trying to give somebody a credit and it you're really doing them a disservice two if you're going to take a lot of pictures on social media you got to mix up the poses a friend of mine this is her only pose everywhere from tokyo to australia she put her hand on the back of her head and she poked her knee out and she, we literally found like 30 pictures of her doing that you got to switch it up you, everybody needs at least three go-to poses and you got to switch them up so people don't we're not on to you. We're following you for years and years and years. We need something else, Paul. We need it to be a little bit spicy. Right. We don't want people to put like the Vaseline on the screen, use all those filters, everything like yeah. And the plating. I have an issue with people with the plating. If they use like a, a, a cheap Chinette situation, I'm like, oh, can you, if you're taking it and putting it on Instagram, can't you just elevate the plating a little? But you I mean, you know. Friend. But people are so excited, Paul. They just want to, they just want to show off. And you got to show up all the way. You got to have the right lighting and your food's got to look good. That's just the bottom line. Some food doesn't look good, it tastes good. So it's a, it's a thing that you tell people about. You don't necessarily show them. Exactly, exactly. And let's talk about side dishes. Like what okay. are some of your favorite or your least favorite side dishes? Like maybe the, um, those potatoes and raisins situation. I yeah, I feel like, I really feel like potato salad doesn't really have a place at Thanksgiving with or without raisins. Um, honestly, and this might be unpopular, Paul, I'm not a big fan of mashed potatoes at Thanksgiving. I just feel like it's not their feature day. I think uh, dressing takes the place of mashed potatoes. It goes right next to the turkey. It takes the place of receiving the gravy. That's what I like. Big fan of collard greens. Uh, with either uh, smoked turkey necks is probably my favorite. Um, and not the biggest fan of green bean casserole or broccoli casserole. Okay. That's but okay. Have, has the, the people at Hormel sent you the oven ready turkey breast? I have not received that yet. I'm gonna talk to, to, I'm gonna talk to my reps. So it is a turkey breast in a bag that goes from the freezer into the oven. It's all marinated and it's juicy and delicious. And you just put it in for two hours. You take it out and you present it to people. If it's like Thanksgiving for just a couple or something, it's great. So I'm obsessed with that. That's like my go-to for Thanksgiving. And That's Friends a great Friends. idea. This year, uh, that, that'd be a great thing this year because you're, we're doing it really small, just my wife and kids. This is the smallest Thanksgiving in the history of the Fredericks family. And that seems like something I can do. I don't usually do too much cooking, Paul. I don't know if you can tell. I do a lot of the eating, not a lot of the preparation, but something that's that easy to eat, I'm all over that. Well, we're going to have to get together and have some oven ready Hormel turkey breasts at some point. Um, tell people where they can find you and thank you so much for joining us. Absolutely. You can find me, Kev, on stage on all social media. Um, uh, beware, I take my shirt off a lot. I don't have a great body, uh, but you know, that's just the way I live my life. Uh, so you, you know, viewer discretion is advised. 
Uh, but have a happy Thanksgiving. Thank you so much for having me. Well, thank you. Thank you. Now that we have that comedy, I think it's time to move on to the main course. Now, this year is a little unconventional, so we're going to have our turkey cooked a little different. We're going to air fry it. And joining us to show you how to cook an entire Thanksgiving meal, and he did it in under 15 minutes, which you can see on Hormel Foods Instagram, is Chef Lamar Moore. He has eight, over 18 years of culinary experience. He was on Food Network's Chopped and Beat Bobby Flay, and he actually recently won Vegas Chef Prize Fight. So he became the executive chef in Las Vegas at Bugsy and Myers. He's hysterical, he's fun, and he is going to show us how to air fry a turkey for Friendsgiving, Thanksgiving, and beyond. Thanks, Paul. Hello, everyone. My name is Lamar Moore, executive chef and restauranteur here. And tonight, we're going to be making uh, one of my all-time favorites, Thanksgiving feast at my house. Uh, but before we get started, I'm going to wash my hands, make sure it's nice and sanitized here. And then we're going to jump right into it. Um, one of my favorite things about Thanksgiving is obviously making turkey and turkey at my home. And we're going to do turkey a little bit different in my house. So today, I know everyone wants to eat a little bit healthier to a degree. So instead of uh, frying a turkey, we're gonna fry it, or we're gonna, we're gonna fry it in an air fryer. So let's get started. So it, because I'm here and I'm not at home um, with my family right now, uh, a lot of families don't have a large family. We're cooking for a little bit smaller family. So, I have a one pound turkey breast here. This is a um, Genio turkey breast, uh, nice and lean, very flavorful. And we're gonna season it up. Um, most chefs brine it, and brining what it does is add a little bit of vinegar, a little bit of salt and sugar. It helps tenderize it. But with this style of turkey, the uh, flavor profile is really, really nice, and it'll come out nice and moist. Um, this is my own personal uh, turkey spice. So inside here, there is some uh, chopped sage, there are some granulated onions, some garlic, salt and pepper, a touch of sugar. Sugar does help uh, give a little nice caramelization on, on top of the uh, uh, turkey breast. And I'm gonna add just a touch of oil, not too much. Again, we're going in the air fryer, so an air fryer um, is to help eliminate as much of the oil as possible and to also give some uh, extra flavor. So we're gonna season, we call coast to coast. The reason why I put the oil in there what it does is gonna help nice rub on the uh, turkey breast. Turkey breast, I know most people don't like turkey breast because it becomes, uh, because of its lean texture and flavor, dry, it tends to dry out. But that's the reason why I'm using the air fryer. With the air fryer, it's gonna allow some moisture in there. And per pound, this should take roughly an hour and a half, two hours. So, um, but this also does cut, cuts down on the, uh, the time when most, you know, during the holidays and during uh, turkey time is what we call it. Um, you're cooking turkeys for almost 15, 16 hours. So we're gonna give that a nice little vigorous rub. Also, when you're doing this, what's great is I would marinate this, marinate this 24 hours in advance. What it does, it allows the flavors to seep and uh, makes it nice and moist and flavorful. And as you can see, the turkey is seasoned all the way around. Okay? Hold on. Wash our hands again. I'll put our turkey in the cooler, allow that to marinate. Take away our oil. And we want to sanitize our area down from all our uh, raw turkey. Always got to make sure your area is nice and clean and sanitized. one more time. And next, 
we're going to pull out our turkey out of the air fryer. Turkey's been cooking now for just under two hours. Should be nice and crispy on the top, even without skin. Which is exactly what we have here. Now, also with the turkey, you'll notice I started with the breast about this big and then had a little bit of shrinkage in there. So you lose about 30% uh, yield on there. We're gonna allow this turkey breast to rest a little bit. Uh, and allow it to rest, you allow the juices to continue to redistribute. Um, you don't wanna slice right into it, all of the natural juices will fall out of the bottom. I've also taken some of the juices that are left over from the bottom of the air fryer and I use it to make turkey gravy. So here on our turkey gravy, um, the drippings from the turkey. There is mirepoix, so carrots, onions, celery cooked down. Um, a little bit of bone broth, not chicken stock, but bone broth for me adds a little bit more flavor. Um, and a little bit of salt and pepper. One of my favorite side dishes to accompany uh, our turkey dinner, and also just in general, is to make mashed potatoes. With my mashed potatoes, I like Yukon Gold potatoes. With Yukon Gold, they have a lot more flavor, uh, and they're nice and buttery. So we've taken our potatoes, I've quartered them, I peeled them, quartered them, they've been boiling uh, for a little bit under 30 minutes, a little bit of salt in there. We're gonna strain them, we're gonna grab a bowl. So to make it simple in your home, have a potato masher, gonna mash those up real, real nice. Gonna go right back in the pot, using a larger pot this time. Also have the, the, the fire on low here. That's keeping the potatoes nice and warm too. As I'm adding um, warm cream and also uh, half and half. It needs a touch more. Our potatoes are done. Earlier today, I made a orange and cranberry sauce to go with our dressing. And we'll talk about our dressing in a second. And I like my cranberry sauce a little bit chunky. So as you can see, there's some nice big pieces of uh, cranberries in there. So have our cranberry sauce here. Um, those of you that know me as well as I cook all the time, I love biscuits. Uh, when I was a kid, my grandmother used to make biscuits all the time. So this recipe has traveled, traveled with me uh, quite a bit in my career and my time. Um, and definitely I'll make sure to have the recipe. Next. I have in the oven. I'm gonna talk about our uh, dressing. Now there's two different types. Um, most cases um, for Thanksgiving, some make dressing, some make um, stuffing. My house, we've all, I've always grown up making dressing. So what that consists of <clears throat> is cornbread. So we start with a basic cornbread batter. Uh, there's buttermilk, there's eggs, there is yellow cornmeal, a little bit of sugar, buttermilk. We cook that down. This one, uh, my granny and my mom usually put gizzards in there, but I want to do something different. So I use Hormel turkey sausage. Uh, so it's get a little more flavorful, a um, little bit of bone broth in there, lots of sage, herbs, lots of butter. And when the cornbread is done, then I whip that in with a lot more sage and a lot more herbs and spices and uh, onions and bell peppers to get a nice caramel color. And this is what I call my Thanksgiving dinner. Oh yeah. So you can hear as I slice, it's got a nice little crunchy texture on top. From uh, the air fryer, it's definitely still juicy, flavorful. And we have our nice turkey gravy. So this is what I call a feast for maybe four people. This is uh, Thanksgiving in my home. Very simple, very easy recipes. I'm all about uh, simple food done well. Um, and welcome, and thank you for joining me at my home. And this is my Thanksgiving meal brought to you by Hormel. Uh, thank you guys so much for joining us tonight. And also thank you for all the local workers that have been working diligently during this hard time and uh, of all of us in America. And uh, happy holidays and back to you, Paul. 
Thank you so much, Lamara. Again, 15 minutes, he created the best Thanksgiving meal. You can check out Hormel Foods social media for more about that. So my next guest is a good friend of mine, Mia Mastroianni. She is a master mixologist who is one of the founding bartenders of Soho House in West Hollywood, which is a members only club that all the celebs and cool people go to that they don't let me come in. Um, she's globally known for her cocktails and she travels the world doing seminars and education and visiting distilleries. And some of you might know her from her hit TV show, Bar Rescue, hosted by John Taffer. It's where she goes in and teaches some people how to make cocktails who should probably already know how to make cocktails. I'm so excited to have her here. So welcome, Mia. Hello, my handsome friend, Paul, and happy Hormel Thanksgiving. I'm so excited to be here. I feel like I've already learned so much about tablescaping and charcuterie boards and how to air fry a turkey. Um, and I had my own personal dance party with Taylor Dane right here. So that's what's happening right now. I love it, Mia. I love it. So tell it to my heart. You're going to whip us up a signature cocktail, perfect for Friendsgiving, perfect for Thanksgiving. So <clears throat> I'm a little thirsty. Can we get this drink going? Well, first of all, shout out to you and your welcome cocktail. That margarita just looked spectacular. And I was very upset that I didn't. I wasn't prepared. You didn't send me a kit, but I'm ready. I'm ready. And what I was thinking about for Friendsgiving with Hormel was not to do something overly complicated for the holidays, because this year we're all celebrating a bit differently. Some of us don't have the added benefit of being with friends and family. Our gatherings are a lot smaller. And that also means that sometimes like we're limited in terms of ingredients. So I wanted to keep it simple, but not short ourselves on flavor profiles and do something where the ingredients are accessible that you guys could actually get by Thursday or Friday or over the holiday season. So I came up with a chai cherry smash and that's what we're gonna do now. So starting with three cherries and guys, it's not cherry season, but guess what? These are frozen, doesn't matter, it's delightful. So I'm just gonna muddle them because that's what we do. Muddling is just a gentle press, but with cherries, you really wanna mix it up. So there we go, we got our mashed cherries. That's gonna be like a vibrant color for our cocktail. We're gonna follow that up with three quarters of an ounce of fresh lemon juice. So uh, I always say the fresher the ingredient, the better. Um, ingredients and their quality really make a difference in, in your cocktails, much like your food. So the, the better the quality, the better your drink. So there we go. We've got three quarters of an ounce of freshly squeezed lemon juice. Next, I'm going to follow this up with something that I just made this, this morning, this afternoon. I don't know what time zone you're in, but this is a chai tea syrup. Essentially, it's a simple syrup. It's not complicated. Simple syrup, equal parts granulated sugar to water. So if you do a half a cup of granulated sugar, you do a half a cup of water. For the chai syrup, you could either do the sugar and water and throw in a couple of chai tea bags, or you could get some chai tea concentrate. And then you would just do equal parts of the chai tea concentrate with your granulated sugar, which is what I did here. We're gonna balance the citrus with three quarters of an ounce of the chai tea syrup. The reason I chose chai is because it's so seasonal and perfect for these winter and fall autumnal flavors and the Thanksgiving thing. We've got cardamom and cinnamon and vanilla and all that cool stuff going on. So um, I really wanted the baking spices and the warmth that comes out of that. Next, we're gonna do one ounce of bourbon. Yep, that's a thing. Because, you know, sometimes we just need that for the holidays when you're spending time with your family. And we're going to finish with an amaretto almond liqueur. I mean, who doesn't love this around the holidays? It is a staple. I've heard you talking about your hot chocolates and your warm drinks. I love a splash of an almond liqueur in any warm holiday beverage. It just adds that little something. It makes you feel special. So with this one, we've got all of our ingredients in. We're just gonna add some fresh ice and my time to shine. And we're done guys, that's it. 
because this is a classic what we call shake and dump. Doesn't sound that pretty, but trust me. Look at the gorgeous color from the macerated muddled cherries. And for a garnish, I did a horse's neck lemon cherry rose. And that is just peeling a lemon all the way around, keeping that whole peel intact and wrapping it around a frozen cherry and I made a rose. So here we are guys. Happy Hormel Friendsgiving. Mia, that drink looks delicious. And I have an idea, if you can't be with your friends during Friendsgiving, you can put those in mason jars and leave them at people's doors. So that way I you can hop on a Zoom and you can all have one. So I think that drink would go really well with some charcuterie. What is a great after dinner drink that you've made a lot? You've had a lot of time behind the bar. So like what's one great after dinner drink? Oh, I mean, if you're going to keep the party going, you can never go wrong with an espresso martini because it's gonna give you a little pep in your step from the caffeine. It's gonna keep that little after, after dinner instead of a coffee, you're just gonna feel a little fancy and get that caffeine going and keep the night and the party going. I love that, I love that. So working at Soho House, I'm sure you've run into a few celebrities. Who is one celebrity that you've served that was so sweet and so great? Oh, I wish I could tell you, darling, but I did sign a non-disclosure. <laughs> I will say, though, that I have worked with and for uh, Soho House for so many years, since 2010, and I've been so fortunate to have so many wonderful opportunities from that experience and have worked the Emmys, the Oscars, the Grammys, everything, and have, have personal stories about quite a few people, but uh, most of them are lovely and... Um, you didn't ask me about my pie choice yet. Well, pumpkin pie or sweet potato pie? Let's Here's hear what you got. Dear diary, how dare you? You left out my favorite pie, pecan. Oh, pecan, pecan, pecan tomato, potato, whatever that looks like. I love a good pecan pie. That's, that's my jam on, on Friendsgiving, Thanksgiving. You know, whatever time of year I this is. I love it. I don't even know what day so, it is. We're, you know, we're all in a pandemic. Hey, I just changed out of my pajamas. Um, Hormel has some great bacon, which would be great in a Bloody Mary the day after Thanksgiving. So what are some of your favorite leftovers the next day? Oh, don't you even toy with me. I mean, it's the most epic of turkey sandwiches where you just get every possible thing left over. If there's cornbread, you use that as the bread. Then you put on a layer of stuffing. You smear on some sweet potatoes, maybe some mashed potatoes. Then you got your cranberry, you throw in some turkey, anything that's like left over from the table and then you just smoosh it all down into a really great sandwich. That Don't sounds it, absolutely not. delicious. I do have another question. Tell us one of your most outrageous moments on Bar Rescue. You don't have to name names, but just tell us some deets. Um, it, it's pretty funny because there was actually a reference to an episode today that was happening on my Twitter account where people uh, were referencing a, an episode that I'm particularly known for where there was a gentleman in San Francisco who honestly believed that women did not belong behind a bar, that no female could bartend, no one could bar, no female could bartend uh, better than him, and no female could lift things on high shelves. Let's just say I took care of that. You better. <laughs> I love it, I love it. Well, Mia, thank you so much for joining us today on Hormel's largest Friendsgiving. Mel. It's been so great to see you. Um, any closing thoughts? Uh, all I would say is wherever you are, whatever you're doing, please have a safe and wonderful Friendsgiving Thanksgiving. If you get to be with your family, enjoy it. But um, after this tough year, it's easy to think about the things that we don't have, but it's also very easy to think about how grateful we can be for the things that we do have. Also, go and support your independent restaurants and bars. We're hurting right now in the industry. So go out, eat some food, get some takeout after Thanksgiving or order a side dish.
Absolutely, absolutely. Support your local restaurants, bars, get cocktails to go, do all that. Mia, it was so good to see you. And okay. um, how delicious was that specialty cocktail? I mean, she puts me to that. shame with my entry cocktail. Now, <laughs> my next guest that's joining us for the largest friends giving is the Grand Dame. She is one of the cast members of The Real Housewives of Potomac, which is a show on Bravo TV. And she is Karen Huger. If you know her, you love her. She's an entrepreneur. She's a family woman. She has a wonderful perfume, La Dame, which is available at Bloomingdale's and on HSN. She has a beautiful family, two kids, Brandon and Raven, and her husband, Ray, who she's been married to for 24 years. I can't wait to hear her do's and don'ts for throwing a Friendsgiving soiree. So everyone, please welcome Karen Huger. Hi, Paul. Can the Grand Dame, how are you? I am fantastic, how are you? Oh my goodness, I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> I am one cocktail in and I'm ready to chat all things Friendsgiving with you, Karen. So first Let's off- Let's do it. I wanna ask some of your holiday soiree dues. Oh, honey, let's just, let's just stick to, to uh, Thanksgiving, right? Friendsgiving, Thanksgiving, yes. Hormel. Honey, I just love, you know, cooking, getting up so early in the morning uh, to prepare those traditional dishes that I do, like my mom's recipe, uh, corn pudding. I don't know if you've ever had that, Paul. Have you had that? Corn pudding? I haven't I had corn pudding, but you. I'm going to come over to your house next year and you're going to make some. I will do that for you. I will do that for you. In fact, I always post it every morning when I'm cooking it now that, uh, you know, I'm doing the housewives for everyone to uh, get my mom's recipe and they just love it. And I'll be doing that again. So I that's one of my dudes. You got to start off cooking early. You got to start off cooking early. Yes. Um, let's talk about side dishes. What are some of your favorite side dishes for Friendsgiving or Thanksgiving? Again, you know, my mom's recipe, I, you know, listen, I was raised on the farm. I watched her do these things. So those are the only things I can cook is holiday cooking, Paul. You know, I, I'm not a big cook, but I've got my mom's recipes down. And I would say that it's the candy yams. I, you know, boil a big pot of sweet potatoes and I make it from scratch. And, you know, everyone eats their tongue out when they come to my house. Um, and this year is going to be a little different. You know, it's very sized down, but, you know, just with the Brandon Raven and Ray, but I am doing all of uh, the traditional dishes that my mom taught me to do. I love it. Yes. Um, so a hot button issue throughout mm -hmm. this largest Friendsgiving with Hormel Foods is pumpkin pie versus sweet potato pie. So what you got? You know what? Um, I'm gonna have to say sweet potato pie. I'm gonna have to say okay. I just love sweet potatoes. I mean, I am. I being over it, you know? If I don't, you can, you know, put it in any recipe. I'm gonna eat sweet potatoes on Friendsgiving, Thanksgiving day. I'm gonna enjoy it. I love it. Now, leftovers, do you have any innovative ideas how to take your Jenny O turkey leftovers and make something <laughs> different, unique, or special? You know what? I'm gonna be traditional. I just like a messy old plate, you know, nothing fancy, whatever is left over from Thanksgiving, the next day tastes so much better to me. It's like, you know, the stuffing, the cranberry sauce. I love the gel, the jelly uh, cranberry sauce. Um, gotta have that. But what I do in particular is I grab that neck bone and put it down in the gravy and put some salt and pepper on it and stew, and stew that. Love it. I eat my tongue out. All I, I Absolutely delicious. <laughs> so with the cranberry yes. sauce, I am a firm believer and the one that comes out of the can with the rings around it. And some people oh. like the like mushy one with the chunks. What, what team are you? I'm with you. I love it when it comes out of the can with the rings around it because I just, you know, cut it in like thin slices and I live off of it. In fact, I have about four cans waiting for me. Four I mean, it's cans. a snack. I hope one's for me. Um, you can have one, Paul. You're more than welcome. I'll set it outside your door so we can have a safe Friendsgiving. <laughs> I love that. That's perfect. Um, let's talk about host gifts. If you okay. are going um, to a Friendsgiving or a Thanksgiving with people within your bubble, what's a great host gift? Well, I have to say, I, I'm with Carson on that. You know, I, I normally host about 20 people and I cook for them traditionally, okay? And I, and I always have 
maybe, you know, a napkin ring that they can take with them as a gift or, or as Carson said, you know, the candle that's right there in the middle of their place. Um, so it's a takeaway. I think you know, creating those memories during holidays, especially now, is very important. And you don't have to do a lot. The simple things matter. And especially right now, you know? Um, so certainly those little trinkets make a world of difference and, and create memories forever. You're so right, Karen. You are so right. I wanna thank you so much for taking the time to join us today for Hormel's largest Friendsgiving. It was so great to see you, catch up, and I know everyone's looking forward to the rest of, rest of the season of The Real Housewives of Potomac. So oh, I will talk That's to you soon, morning. Karen. Thank you, Hormel. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Mwah. Uh, she is so sweet. You know what else is sweet? Some dessert. And we have Chef Grace Ramirez joining us to walk us through a tasty dessert. So she is Miami born, Venezuelan raised. She's a global citizen. She was on Beat Bobby Flay in the TV show, The Chew. And um, she knows her way around a kitchen. She knows her way around a TV show. And she also produced and directed Throwdown with Bobby Flay. So I'm gonna let Chef Grace Ramirez take it from here. Hello, Paul, and thank you so much for having me at the world's largest virtual Friendsgiving Hormel Food Edition. So I'm very excited because this is a crowd pleaser and it's a flourless chocolate cake that I always put on the table and in 1.5 seconds, it's gone. It's fairly simple to make, but I'm gonna quickly guide you through the ingredients because most people think about non flour cakes and they're like, eh, how is that gonna turn out? But this is amazing and it's all about the chocolate. Um, so you get 250 grams of dark chocolate, 70% plus good quality chocolate that you love, and then 125 grams, so that's half of the 250 of butter, 125 grams of sugar, and then for texture and a little bit of spice, you're gonna have walnuts or pecans and a touch of cayenne and a pinch of salt. And that's for that extra layer of flavor. Five eggs divided, yolks versus white, and then we kind of can combine everything together. <laughs> Let's do this. So first, we have to melt the chocolate and the butter. And for that, we need to go into the stove. Here you kind of give it a minute and let it do its thing. I'm gonna get my eggs. So I have my eggs separated, five eggs, whites and yolks, and here we are going to add, right, to the bigger bowl, my white, some sugar, right, and we are going to start whisking. So beautiful, boom. So you do want a stiff peak consistency, right? And this part is essential so that it's nice and fluffy and that cake will be just yum. So now that this is ready, we are going to do the same thing with our yolks and the rest of the sugar. So here we have 
are yolks, right? They're, you see they turn a bit pale and it's like a foam, right? Because this has yolks and sugar. And then here we have our beautiful whites. So now we're going to combine everything together. And for that, we have to get our chocolate and butter mixture. So this is perfect, right? Here, all we have is that beautiful chocolate and the butter. We're gonna add a pinch of cayenne. We're gonna add our walnuts. You can add pecans as well. This is about a half a cup. Beautiful. Okay, so let's recap what we have here. This is our chocolate butter mixture with a pinch of cayenne and walnuts. Here we have our beautiful whites have, that have been whisked till stiff peaks. And um, here we have our yolks that have been, you know, whisked as well with some um, sugar. And now we shall combine. Now, the fun part is, so we are going to gently combine the chocolate mixture into the egg whites. Make sure you get a good quality chocolate because you're going to taste that chocolate. It's pretty chocolatey. <laughs> so this will go into a 325 oven. Again, it depends on your oven for about 25 minutes at least, 25 to 35 minutes. So we check the cake and it's done. Yum! Now it's going to be time to just add those finishing touches, whatever you like. It can be sugar, it can be pomegranate, it can be rose petals, edible flowers, extra walnuts, whatever you like. So here you have it guys, my super famous, <laughs> delicious, flourless chocolate cake. Thank you to my friends at Home World Foods for having me. Have a great Thanksgiving, everyone. Ciao. How delicious does that look? Thank you so much, Chef Grace. Now, our next guest, how many boy band fans do we have out there? I mean, I for one, a big fan of InSync. We have the breakout star of InSync, Joey Fatone, joining us. Joey is a true Renaissance man. He's a TV host. He is a Broadway star, a voiceover artist. He was on The Masked Singer, singing, obviously. Um, and he was on the Food Network's Unwrapped, as well as My Family Recipe Rocks. Just, he's done everything. He's done everything. And he actually is working on Fat Ones, a hot dog business right now. He's a true foodie. And we're gonna have to ask him about that whole Taylor Dane competition thing. So everyone, big round of applause, Joey Fatone. Hey, Joey. Thank you. What's going on, Paul? How you doing? I'm, I'm doing well, I'm doing well. I'm excited to have you here with Hormel's largest Friendsgiving. And I wanna hear a little bit about what's going on with you for Thanksgiving. Well, right now, it's so happy, just so happens to actually come at the same time. I'm having a Friendsgiving right now. I'm at a buddy of mine's house, uh, his name is Jim. So we're at Jim's house, uh, a couple of friends, there's seven of us, uh, eight, including my daughter. We're having a, a, thanks, a Friendsgiving party here. Uh, I know it's a little bit of a cocktail hour right now for us, so we have some drinks at the moment. So, uh, but we're having a great time, you know, for us today, you know, you got to obviously thing that's been going on as far as, oh, wait, Paul, sorry, cheers. Cheers, Paul. Cheers. Paul, put it up, buddy. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> no, no, I got you. But we've just been, you know, it's one of those things, of course, everything that's been going on, we try to, you know, get everything smaller. I know we've had, you know, usually I'll have really big, big Thanksgivings. And right now we're dealing with, you know, the pandemic. So we have today, we're only with seven. My actual Thanksgiving is going to be maybe 12 people, I think. And that's pretty much my parents, my sister, my brother. Uh, so it's been, it's been pretty interesting, you know, but we, it's interesting. And it's funny because, you know, when people sign up to do something with Hormel, 
it's funny because through the years, even from the very beginning, I think Lance actually taught me this recipe. It was Hormel chili with no beans. And you either put, you can put uh, either regular cheese into it or you do Philadelphia cream cheese and you put it in a microwave and you put it with a dip. It's absolutely friggin' amazing. So I'm just, that that's sounds, something that I'm That sounds doing absolutely delicious, but we're jumping ahead a little. Let's just get back a little I know, to the I'm cocktail. I'm just happy to be here. What is your Thanksgiving cocktail of choice? Um, uh, Captain Morgan and Coke Zero is what I've been doing at the moment. We did uh, uh, shots of uh, Fireball. Uh, I'm not, I'm not drunk yet, but it may happen later on. We'll see. But you know, that's my drink of choice, Captain. And that comes here. It is not a holiday party unless somebody's doing shots and there's a captain True. involved, right? Right. Yes. Correct. Um, you always got to put your foot so up. Let's chat a little bit about your side dishes and what your go-tos are for Friendsgiving and Thanksgiving. Yeah. Um, Thanksgiving. Well, Friendsgiving, a buddy of mine really cooked everything. He did a green bean casserole. He did, um, Oh, gosh, what else did he do? He did, obviously, a full turkey. A buddy of mine, Ryan Cabrera, uh, if you guys know who he is, he actually makes a mean cauliflower, a very uh, buffalo cauliflower. He made that today. What I'm going to be making on Thursday, I actually make, since I'm Italian, we do a, I do a sauce. People call it gravy sometimes. But I do a whole thing with the sausage, meatballs. Uh, I make the meatballs. Then we're doing a turkey, usually a deep-fried turkey, which is absolutely amazing when you inject the different uh, seasonings into it. But right now what I'm doing is I'm going to be brining a turkey which I've never done before. So my, uh, my sister's allergic to uh, peanut oil. And I was like, all right, so what do you want to do? She's like, brine a turkey. I've never done it. So I'm learning how to do that this Thanksgiving. I love that. I love that. So Jenny O has this oven ready turkey that is all marinated and everything like that. So you take it from the freezer, you put it into the oven in like two hours, it's ready. I am not a home cook, I can barely boil water, but they sent me one and I was like, this is amazing. I love your Italian riff on Thanksgiving. That reminds me of New York. And speaking of New York, it, let's chat a little bit about this competition between you and Taylor Dane in our matzo ball <laughs> soup. Yeah, you know, um, in the competition, I will say, uh, she made a pretty mean matzo ball soup, but that's her go-to. And I have a little beef with that and I'll tell you why. She knows how to make matzo ball soup. I made fried rice, which I've never really made before, but I made a spicy fried rice with a little bit of a jalapenos. I actually put apples cut up into it uh, and did this whole thing within 30 minutes. They kept saying hers was better. I know that mine was definitely, I think mine was more of a crowd pleaser, but we both lost in the end. So Lou Diamond Phillips won that. That was the uh, competition with, it was called Guy, F Guy versus Rachel. It was Guy Fieri and Rachel Ray. So it's, uh, it was uh, interesting as far as like the competition. So, but I've known, I've known Taylor for many years. Uh, we've always been going to Kentucky Derby. Uh, gosh, it's been almost 18, 19 years. Sad that we missed this year because of the pandemic. Boys to Men goes there as well, so we have a great time with them. And uh, it's always interesting to just have this competition with people that are friends. It's just fun. It's fun. Why not? I know. know. It's a lot of fun. So speaking of Boys to Men, you, Taylor, music is such a big part of any celebration, whether it's a virtual Friendsgiving, anything like that. So what are some of your favorite songs during the holiday time? Hmm. Let me think. Um, there is a version of Oh Holy Night that a group called InSync sings. It's absolutely amazing. I mean, it's spectacular. You got to hear it if you ever heard it before. But then there's there's another one, Silent it. Night, which which I believe Boys to Men does, which is a great one. Um, you know what? I, it's just the minute you start to get with the Thanksgiving and the whole Christmas feeling, you can't help but play any Christmas. You know, you got Mariah Carey, who's got the stellar song, of course. Uh, all I want for Christmas. And it's just, you know, it just makes you feel good. I think for me, when you hear Christmas music, especially, and especially when the Thanksgiving and holidays come in, it just reminds me of when I was younger living in Brooklyn. And as far as with my family and my parents and stuff like that, it just always kind of brings a lot of great and fun memories. And it's always amazing for me personally to know where I was from and where I, where I came from basically, because, you know, you know, when celebrities get, you know, high and mighty or money or this and that, you kind of forget the, the things that really matter. And I remember even being in my house in Brooklyn, New York, in a three family house in the middle where there was about 15 to 20 people in a, literally we were having dinner in our living room. That's how big the, it was. we were just top on top of each other. We cook outside on the grill, make, you know, shrimp and do the seven fishes. That's what Italians do for Christmas. We do the whole seven fishes thing. And it was just a great time. You know, again, no matter how much money we had or how whatever it was, we made the best of it. And that's what we did. Right. And those are the memories that really stick. Those memories from your childhood with your family of those different times mm -hmm. and all that. I was thinking of some other songs that we could perhaps do for Friendsgiving, like Thigh, Thigh, Thigh. It's going to be me. <laughs> Sorry. 
I had to, I had to. Let's talk about leftovers. What are some of your favorite leftovers or some creative leftover situation that you do? Um, You know, you can always do a turkey sandwich, the the Thanksgiving sandwich, which is, you know, you grab either a loaf of Italian bread, you can do regular two sandwich, you know, two pieces of bread. You do the turkey, you do the cranberry, you do a little bit of the stuffing, you put that in a sandwich, kind of heat it up, and that's kind of the leftovers. But then on top of that, since I'm Italian, we do raviolis or rigatoni, and later on you have a meatball sub when you're, you know, the next day. So yeah, you do that too. All sorts of food in those Italian homes. I miss that. I miss that. Um, a lot of food. so what is you know, a lot of food. And we, one we great home. Ho- like I said, sorry. It's good. I said sometimes I try to incorporate, like I said, with the Hormel dip. It, it's it, I don't know. It's so simple, but it's amazing. I'm sorry. I keep talking about it. I apologize. No, no need to apologize. We want to hear. We want to hear <laughs> what's going on with you. And we saw that you recently went to Disney with your little one. So what's something special you're doing for her this Friendsgiving, Thanksgiving? Well, my, the thing about my, my older one is actually in college right now. She, she goes to Michigan State. So my little one, of, of course, is home and she has, um, you know, her, her Thanksgiving vacation. So we've just been truly having a lot of fun. There's a lot of actually things to do here in Orlando. Thank goodness, of course, there's a lot of guidelines, of course, you know, everybody's wearing masks, hand sanitizer. I'm, I'm, I'm actually very pleasantly surprised because I know certain people, you know, they care, they don't care. But for, for different theme parks that are here in Florida, they've been taking real great precautions and real care. And that's why I actually have been going. I think those, for me personally, is probably one of the safest places to go because they're constantly sanitizing. They're constantly, literally at Universal, when you walk out, they literally are spraying your hands with hand sanitizer. So I was like, you know what? Let's go to the theme parks. And she loves the theme parks. She loves going out there. And especially with the theme parks out here, they're very festive. They get very, uh, all the trees are out there. They get very decorative. So it's a lot of fun. It's a great time. I love that. I love that. And you're moving into the hospitality world. I've been to Lance Bass's Bar Rocco's in West Hollywood many times. Um, what is one great memory during the holidays with InSync? Um, you know what? It's crazy because when we were traveling all the time, we actually were together. So we were together for Thanksgiving. We were together. Um, you know, actually, Christmas was probably Christmas was maybe the only time that we we actually tried to take a break. But Many Thanksgivings, actually, we were touring uh, um, around, and we were actually in Vegas for some reason. Always landed in November, we were touring at different times. So we always had our families come in, and all of our families would get together and have a Thanksgiving together. You know, obviously, we weren't home, being able to home to cook, home cook meals, but we did what we can. Um, you know, as far as even birthdays, me and Justin's birthday were together. We always had birthdays together. His was January, mine was January 20th. His is on the 30th. So I love it. we always had a lot of holidays together. And we, you know, it's amazing to see but it's great to see how now a lot of them are having families and doing those traditions on their own, which is great. And then, you know, every once in a while we get together, which is great. So it's been, it's again, it's one of those things where every time holidays come around, you reflect on so many different things. And especially for musicians and people that were traveling, you remember those times and you know, the crew is your family, you know, everybody out there was your family. Right. Right. And I know that everyone is just, so grateful to have you in our lives on TV and it's so many different mediums and to have, heard in sync for so many years it's just made our lives so full and so wonderful um, <laughs> well, like, so what is one that. host gift that you would love to receive if somebody came to your house during a holiday soiree one gift you know what nothing because you know what I, I i enjoy people's company for me personally you know it's always great to get that kind of gift that you always wanted or something like that but you know as far as what you know what we love to do as far as celebrities and people that we we love to, to donate our time and donate our, our, honestly, and our charity with Hormel. They've been doing so many different things as far as, you know, they're pledging a million dollars to different products and donation for hunger relief, which is a great thing. So all these different things uh, they've been doing. What are you doing, sir? I have somebody over here that, that wanted to say hi. It's a happy hour. So Ryan Cabrera is here. Mr. Fatone, yes, sir. I brought your 1927 uh, aged over 100 years fireball cinnamon whiskey. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Thank, you. Thank you very much. Yes. Appreciate we have a drop in by another pop star. Oh, thank you. There you go. Enjoy. <laughs> so we have Ryan Cabrera out here as well. This this is our, our, our Friendsgiving. This is what's been going on this whole time. Well, <laughs> Joey, I don't want to keep you any longer. I'm so grateful for you to join us today. Thank you. Friendsgiving with us. Thank you. This is uh, Eric from O-Town is here too. To, uh, oh, we, to, to, he's just boy band pot. central over there. Right. We love it. This is what happens. You know, it's a, it's a celebrity Friendsgiving is what we got going on here. We love it. We love it. Well, so cheers I will, to that. Cheers to that. I'm cheers to, to that. Head. 
Shots, 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 shots. That's going to be painful later on, but thank you, sir. Thank you. Right. Hey, thank you. What's, what's a holiday party without a little hangover? So, you know, Joey, thank you so much. We will let you go. You and friends. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with a Friendsgiving when someone can feed you apple pie. Can you do that again? Thank you, Ryan. Can you, yeah, thank you. Shots, I'm apple pie, everything. Can you? Get, yeah, thank you, Ryan. Uh, uh, sorry, Paul. Go ahead. No, that's more entertaining than what I have to say. But we'll let you get back to eating. We'll let you get back to drinking. Well, I appreciate you. Seriously, guys, I hope you guys have a great Thanksgiving. Happy Friendsgiving, everybody that's having one today or these next couple of days. And um, cheers to that. Seriously, hope you guys enjoy. Sean, Juan, and uh, and uh, Nate from Boys to Men. I love those guys. They're my, they're my, they're my family. So hopefully you guys have fun. Cheers to that, Joey. <laughs> really excited to welcome our next guest. They have won four Grammy Awards and they're pop music royalty. They have such hits as End of the Road, I'll Make Love to You, and my personal favorite, One Sweet Day. They've appeared on TV shows like Grease Live, The Bachelorette, and even The Odd Couple. In 2012, they got their star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame and their R&B icons. If you haven't seen their residency in Vegas, it was renewed until 2021 and uh, they actually won the Casino Entertainment Award. So they also have a wine line. So that's speaking my language, it's called Harmony. So let's give a big, warm Hormel Foods Friendsgiving welcome to Boys to Men. Hey! What's up, what's up, what's up? <laughs> what's happening? How man? are you guys? Welcome to Hormel Foods Friendsgiving. Oh, so you, tell me a me. little bit about your wine line. Oh man, uh, Harmony by Boys um, to Men. It's all gone. <laughs> yeah, and mine's almost there. See, I'm, I'm drinking yeah. white today. <laughs> I'm in my studio. As it so should be gone, it's a holiday party. It's a Friendsgiving That's soiree. Right. You should be drinking. Oh, 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 oh. Harmony so what by made Boys you guys want to start a wine line? You know what? It's something that we've always wanted to do. If, if It was something that we felt like was very, con you know, I guess it correlated to the music that we've already created. You know, we even have a slogan from one of our songs, I'll Make Love to You, where it says, pour the wine, light the fire. And, you know, our songs, you know, are, are very harmonious with drinking a little wine, creating a little romantic vibe, a little energy, you know, that type of thing. So it felt natural for us to uh, go into the business of, of making our own and, you know, being able to have people not only listen to our harmonies, but be able to taste it as well. So with thus the name Harmony, like we feel like uh, the wine represents who we are as a group. It's all organic. Um, it's all pure. It's from, you know, the city of Bordeaux in France. And we have three wines. We have white, we have rosé, and we have red. And it's really been a hit, um, you know, with, with our fans and people who are just avid wine drinkers, for those people who do drink it and do try it, they truly, truly love it. So we're very proud of, uh, you know, what we've come up with in a product that, you know, we're, uh, you know, given to the world. So it's just, again, it's, to answer your question, it just felt like a natural thing. You know, we, we sing romantic music and uh, wine has always been known as that romantic elixir. There you go. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and wine makes me think of drinking Drinking makes me think of Las Vegas. You guys obviously had a residency in Las Vegas. Absolutely. Now, when you get to go back to Las Vegas, where are your spots to eat and drink in Las Vegas? Mm. Wow. Um, I think uh, there's a lot of spots. Um, we do a, a Italian. It's a place uh, kind of, I think it's off Tropicana. It's called uh, Casa de Amor. Uh, it's very beautiful um, uh, decor. It's real old-fashioned Vegas. Um, of course, we got Beauty in Essex, which is, you know, kind of, you know, the dress up, you That's know, fun. go out, have a couple yeah. of drinks and, and yeah. eat with the friends and stuff like that, which hasn't been uh, my go to recently because of COVID. But um, um, it's a lot of different places out there that's that's that out here in Vegas that are that are really like popping, you know, as far as food is concerned. You just got to kind of like, you know, find the right one, you know. You got Mayfair. Exactly, exactly. It's, it's, and when they're, you're they're at home and celebrating Friendsgiving, Thanksgiving, let's talk about side dishes. I want each of you to chat about your favorite side dish and why. Yeah. Mac and cheese. Uh, there you go. 
<laughs> yeah, that's it. Mac and yeah. cheese, yams, yeah. candy jams. Like, yeah, that's like black people's favorite fruit. <laughs> mac and cheese. <laughs> mac and cheese. Candy okay, yams. mac and cheese is the winner. So, you know, this yeah. is a live feed, so we're getting some song requests. So can <laughs> we sing one? Oh, well, you know what? what I, this, this, is, this is what I'll do, all right? You, you, you shoot, the, shoot the song out there, and then I'll sing my part. Well, it's let's tell them why. Let's tell, yeah, it's kind of yeah. difficult with Zoom because the microphones, they mute, and some guys are delayed because of internet or whatever. So all right, well, you it's, shoot out, it's gonna sound pretty horrible. But shoot go out on, a song, go on, got it. and I'll do it. Go ahead, let me hear it. Okay, the first request, One Sweet Day. One Sweet Day, <clears throat> here we go. <laughs> Although the sun will never shine the same, I'll always look to a brighter day. Lord knows when I lay me down to sleep, you will always listen as I pray. And I know. There you go. <clears throat> nice. <laughs> that's a little sample I, little sample little sample kudos yeah. kudos that was amazing what about a little uh, I'll make next, love to you next one? throw another one out there for him. I'll make love to you what I'll make love to you <laughs> baby tonight is your night and I will do you right just make a wish on your night, anything that you ask, I will give you the love of your life, your life, your life. I'll make love hold okay. you tight. There you go. Give me another one. That's, that's okay. Oh, I'm getting. I'm just getting through my chills from let's, you let's going go, up there. Go. Wow. Okay. Um, end of the road. End of the road. Um, okay. Go ahead, Nate. We belong. <laughs> <laughs> he said, Here we go. one more. Go ahead, Nate. Mm. Right when I'm drinking. We belong together. And you know that I'm right. Oh, yes. Why do you play with my heart? And why do you play with me? And he's gone. And he's gone. <laughs> oh. Who's going to pick up this slack? <laughs> yeah, you know, it cut, cut us up all. <laughs> okay, what about water runs dry? Go ahead, Shiki. All right. Uh, no, no. Yeah. No, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. They can see the tears in. Yeah. No, no, no. They can see the tears in our eyes. My bad. We do not have pain that lies deep in our hearts. Well, maybe that's a pain we can hide. Because everybody knows that we're both torn apart. <clears throat> Why do we hurt each other? Why do we push love away? Let's don't wait till the water and shine. Don't let the harmony we run. We might watch our whole lives pass us by. <laughs> Let's don't wait till Sorry. the water and <clears throat> shine. I don't know if y'all heard I cut out, but I'm back. We'll make the biggest mistake of our lives. Don't do don't it, do it baby. There you go. Give us another one. So, so I, I just have a question. If I get some of that harmony wine, will I be able to harmonize and sing like you all? Absolutely. I know the answer. I know the Absolutely answer. Absolutely not. Because this is killing my voice right now. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. No, you don't want to no, drink that. No, no. <laughs> Stick with the water. No, no, no. It's okay. It's good. It's smooth. I mean, drink it's, it. Guys, I couldn't carry a note if it had handles. What about how, let how it about snow? It, it, okay. <clears throat> go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Let it snow. Yeah. Come a little closer, God must have sent you down from heaven, Nate. Let me get a little bit of that. Let it snow, let it snow outside, it's cold, but the fire's blazing, so baby, let it snow. 
So many bit. hits. Nice so many stop. hits. Now, what about Please Don't Go? Oh, wow. Whoa. All right, here we go. No. Go ahead, Shiki. My eyes <laughs> begin to see go. that I need you near and with me at all times. Oh, yeah. My feelings are so deep for you that I won't let <clears> go. <throat> oh, no. I love you. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I can't let this love slip away and I can turn it around, you see, and only then. Woo. Please don't go away from me. I'll be drunk in two minutes. When you minutes. call my name, I'll reach out my hand to you. Until my heart, please don't go away from me. We can work it out, whatever it may be, girl. Please don't please. go. No, 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 no. Please don't go. Oh, oh yeah. I Woo. like that little doodad you got on there, Sean. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's you know, called it's called, an, it's called an irritating pourer, Nathan. Like it, it 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 allows the wine to receive the right amount of oxygen. So when you do taste it, you're tasting its actual flavor. So this oh, that's a little cushion. That's a little cushiony, but I like it. Yeah, I like it. Hey, cushiony's okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, that right. is fancy. So, yes, sir. Yeah. Um, there you go. What about fifty what? candles? Oh, 50 God. candles what is people on there asking for it bro yeah, yeah, holy uh, crap. I, yeah I, asking I'm, for it. I'm getting dry it's currently right 9 53 p.m on the east coast so that people know it's live you know yeah. people know yeah, it's almost 10 o'clock vocal 50 candles how it goes sean well. you uh, wrote it feels like one of those nights lady i'm in need a love in the hurry. Fifty candles burn bright, and all is alright. As our bodies unite, <clears throat> take our time to it right. Go ahead, Nate. Yeah. Take it off. Throw yeah. it down. <laughs> Come and get this. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Guys, that was great. That was great. Now let's thank now you, thank, thank let's get back to some food talk. Movie. Sorry, with okay. all these requests, That's we gotta you know get them going. Oh yeah, we'll be so. A let's talk box. about leftovers during mm. Turkey Day. What are your favorite oh, but, leftovers? And you can't say the same as the side dishes because it needs to be like a little reinvented. First off, first off, like I haven't. My family, at least my wife, has not made a turkey in quite a few years because one, it takes forever. And two, you never eat it all, especially even with all the people that we have at the place. So we stop making turkey. So we have less, you know, leftovers in our refrigerators. But if we do have the leftovers, there's always mac and cherries. There's always the yams there. We, we might have some collards left, some collard greens. Uh, let me see. Uh, some, some, uh, my wife makes great stuffing. Um, let me see. Um, and that's normally in a refrigerator. That and some leftover like Coca-Cola and um, some, some so like a half <clears throat> of a half empty bottle of some whiskey or something. And that, well, you know, I think I think um I think one of my go-to shiki might be um I like a, a turkey sandwich, definitely turkey sandwich. But what I do is I actually I grill cheese a turkey sandwich. And I take a little bit of stuff, and just a little bit, because you don't want to overpower the turkey. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you take a little bit of turkey, you do the stuffing, you chop up some onions, you know what I mean? And throw that on there, you know what I mean? And you make yourself a grilled cheese turkey sandwich, right? Wow, that's it. And what, and what you do is, of course, the side dish. You got to have some yams on the side. And what I do with my yams and my mac and cheese is I kind of eat up some yams and mac and cheese at the same time so I can get the juicy ooey gooey gush goodness the ooey gooey, the ooey gooey goodness ooey gooey. of yeah. both tastes ah. of both tastes and you know <laughs> you do a little bit of uh, a little bit of that uh some some eggnog with some with a dash of uh make, maker's mark in it and you'll be going to the bathroom all night you straight 
<laughs> there you go. Nate, anything? You had me at the bourbon and I, the eggnog. Now, right? we have a great solution for I, you if you I, don't want to cook I'm, a whole bird. Um, well, Jenny O yeah. has an oven ready turkey breast that goes from the freezer into the oven and you mm, let it cook for two hours. It's all marinated. It comes out delicious. Uh, I do not cook. I make drinks. That, that, that's so that's a great solution. Is, if it's good for you. Yeah, they, they thought of everything. That well, well, maybe we'll try that. But it's like, yeah, it's like we just gave up. Because it's like, first it takes like five days to cook the turkey, you know, and, and like you got to kind of, you know, make sure that it's cooking right, it's roasted right. And then I've had a couple of like incidences as a young kid where, you know, some of our, uh, our family members was in charge of making the turkey. And in a nutshell, it, it didn't do it right. It, it, just, it just didn't come by, it came out dry, you know, and all that other stuff. So, you know, it, tur turkey's kind of like, yes, it's traditional, but, you know, we live in 2020. So it's like, you know, this. Is you do what you like, you do what you feel, and, and as a matter of fact, while I'm while I'm uh, jibber jabbing, I would like to say, while we're you know we're here, boys to men is pleased, right, to 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 be the ones to announce this. All right, now, on top of what you know, Handel is all, Hormel is already <coughs> done. Um, Hormel Foods will be denoting, de donating, excuse me, an additional two hundred and fifty thousand meals tonight to Feeding America, and again, that's on top of what the company has already done. So Hormel, you guys are amazing. Thank you for just, you know, making the country a lot better, making uh, the holidays a little bit brighter for people. We appreciate you guys and we appreciate you guys having us as guests. We hope that you enjoyed the impromptu performance. You know, there's not, there's no technology right now that's able to sync all of us yet. I and mean, I'm sure someone's working on it. And uh, when it does, we'll be able to give you guys a real good virtual live. But again, Hormel, thank you very much. Paul, thank you very much. But just allowing us to, you know, share share your friends giving with all of you beautiful people that are watching. Truly appreciate it. Well, thank you guys so much. We really appreciate you creating the soundtrack of our lives and being here with us tonight at Hormel Foods' largest friends giving. Yeah. So there have been many people who have emerged as heroes during the pandemic, from healthcare workers to essential workers. People and companies have really stepped up. As Boys to Men mentioned, Hormel has really stepped up. During the pandemic, Hormel Foods has donated more than $1.5 million and more than 4 million meals to those who've needed a little bit more help this year. Pretty incredible. And as Boys to Men said, in honor of this Friendsgiving um, and going out and helping people, Hormel's donating 250,000 meals to Feeding America. Not a great resource for people who are trying to get food, trying to get through this year, everything like that. Um, if you guys have anything to donate, feel free to reach out to Feeding America or any charity to donate during this challenging year. I wanna thank you all for joining us today. I also wanna thank all of our culinary wizards, our performers, our reality stars, our personalities, comedians. This has been such a great event brought to you by Hormel Foods. So happy Friendsgiving. And happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Cheers. Hi, good evening, Hormel team members. Uh, thanks for joining us tonight. It's been a fabulous night to celebrate not only um, a great entertainment and evening um, as we prepare for Thanksgiving, um, but really to think about all the friends that we have and that we are so lucky and fortunate to work around each and every day. I hope that tonight you and your family are joining us and you're giving thanks to your company, to your health, as well as uh, to each other and have a chance to be really grateful for everything that we do have. And I know it can be trying uh, in today's world because we're bombarded with a lot of challenging things, but we are so fortunate to be here tonight as well as to be here with our friends and family here at Hormel Foods. So with that, stay positive, stay inspired, and I hope you and your families just have a wonderful, safe, and healthy Thanksgiving and holiday season. Thanks. Thank you for joining us to our Hormel Foods Friendsgiving celebration this evening. Being a part of the grocery products group is something that I'm truly grateful for. A heartful thank you goes to our sales and marketing teams, our plant professionals, and to all our support teams for everything you do each and every day. Thank you for inspiring us. 
So to all of you and to all of those watching, have a very, very happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Hey, everybody. I'm super glad that you were able to join our Friendsgiving today. And I know that 2020 has been a tough year. And as we get around the holidays and Thanksgiving, it's a great opportunity to take stock and just think about what we're grateful for. And I wanted to share some of my thoughts. I'm grateful for the 1,200 employees and team members that we have across our three factories, our offices, our home offices all around China. I'm also really grateful for the 600 passionate Staracianos we have in Brazil and all of our HFIC team and partners around the world. I'm also incredibly grateful for being part of this amazing team of 20,000 inspired members. So I want to wish you a happy Thanksgiving. And again, thank you for coming out for this Friendsgiving. Thank you for joining us this evening. On behalf of the entire Hormel Foods organization, I'd like to wish all of you watching our 20,000 inspired team members across the globe a happy and safe Thanksgiving. As we close, I'd like to personally invite everyone to tune into this year's Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade at 9 a.m. on NBC Thanksgiving morning. To celebrate our 80th anniversary, we are joining the iconic parade lineup. We're so excited that for the first time in the parade's 94 year history, Genio will be the first turkey brand partner in the event. Pop superstar BB Rexa will be performing her hit single, Baby I'm Jealous, on our float with all the glitz and glamour you'd expect from the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Thank you again, and a special thanks to our essential Genio team for helping to feed the world today and every day. Enjoy the parade and happy Thanksgiving. Hi everybody, I am so excited to announce that I'm gonna be performing at the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade in my hometown, New York City. And I wanna just send this message out to Jenny O because they're having me on their first float ever and I'm gonna be performing Baby I'm Jealous. So uh, make sure you don't miss it. It's on Thanksgiving morning and um, I love you. Don't miss it. <laughs>